right, lords and ladies, we are back once again for an episode of Trapped Under Plastic. It's episode 20. We are no longer a teenager. At 28, do you know what that means? 20, what, 28 episodes? Yeah. What does that mean? Wait, how many? No, 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 no. How many weeks are there in a year? 52, right? 52 weeks. So what's half of 52? 28. Eight. Not 26. 26. 26. So at 26, we'll be doing this for a year. Really? Yeah. It doesn't feel like it's been that long. It feels like six months. Well, yeah, we can't celebrate too early because we're not there yet. But yeah. in six episodes, we will be. Okay. And so I just don't know if that means anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think at one point we discussed maybe taking a break after a year to reassess the podcast, its goals, its, uh, its performance, and maybe to adjust things. Sure. Yeah. I mean, this is we'd take a break right and then we wouldn't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'd just be a break. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So you guys let us know. No. Spruce and spread. <laughs> we'll discuss this. They don't <laughs> oh, let us know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You guys don't make the decisions for us, apparently. <laughs> uh, but yeah, obvious thing here. Me and John are back in my basement together in the same space. Minnesota has lifted the shelter in place uh, requirement and is now allowing people to. Uh, get together in parties of no more than 10. Yep. So I think that is us, right? Yeah, yeah. we're two people. We right? are two. We, we are less ego, than we 10. Have, we have ego enough for 10. Right. But... Yeah. The room is filled right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's max occupancy uh, in this room, 10 or just John and Scott. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. No one else can fit. You can't fit in yeah. this room. Yeah, so we're good. We're back. We're not in front of computers. I don't got to deal with syncing weird audio between computers and stuff like right. that. This is easy. Yeah. And hopefully it makes for a better podcast. I think I, I have more fun doing it this way. Yeah, yeah. Because we just get to chat. I mean, now that we don't chat over the internet. But yeah, but then we also get to go on romantic tendy dates later. Yes. yes. That, good segue. Yes. Good segue. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the uh, the pre-episode rambles here. We're, we're, what we're going to do today is we're going to shoot podcasts. Mm-hmm. We're going to go on a lunch date. Yes. We're going to get tendies to go. We're not going to eat in anywhere. We're not barbarians. No, we can't do that anyways. We can't do that anyways. I yeah. mean, so we're going to take them to go. I don't know where we're going to go. Should we go to a nice park or... Like yeah, that? just park and just <laughs> eat in the hood of my car. <laughs> Stare up at the sky. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we're going to we're gonna maybe go to the source too. Yeah. You know, check out some some new minis. Are there new minis there? I don't know. We'll find out. I that guess. is that's part of the excitement. Yeah, I guess I haven't really been in the source for a long time. Yeah. You got your mask. We're gonna put it, we're gonna mask up. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go in full gas mask. Yeah, they allow twenty instances of people, which means that us is one instance. One instance. Right. Right. Yeah. And maybe Dan the man will be working. Maybe. And we can pre- because we have masks on, we can pretend we're other people. Yeah. And he won't know. Right. And we can give him crap. Yeah. Let's do that. We'll complain about stuff like yeah. the like the cleanliness of the bathroom. <laughs> right. This is a terrible idea. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh we can whisper to him about trading bits in the behind the store and stuff. <laughs> see, see if he catches on. All right. So we got some feedback from one of your friends and one of my budding friends, Joshy. Yeah. Yes. He, Joshy. He, he came over with John one time to drop off SD card footage in the past for me to edit when we were we were recording this remotely mm-hmm. and uh, you know I asked him if he had any feedback for us because I always like to hear and he was like you guys agree too much oh yeah we agree too much he was like you need to argue more or at least be more deliberate about it so taking the kind of devil's advocate approach sure okay what do you think of that I mean I think that makes for probably a more entertaining episode right yeah I'm like you suck that's stupid you're stupid Go to hell. Don't have you cry. Oh, no, jeez. Right. Yeah, it's a fine line. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm curious if that thought resonates with anyone who, who watches it in, in the comment section below, or you can send us an email, or I don't know where you send us an email, maybe a message on Facebook or something like that in the in the, in the group that we have. Mm-hmm. Um, just let us know if you think we agree too much, and then we can maybe be more deliberate about taking two sides to an argument to maybe have more of an interesting conversation. Mm. I think some episode topics it would it would transition to that easier some like our topic for today yeah i don't know if like right. yeah. i don't know like you're talking about a dream project that you have and i'm gonna say that's a stupid project <laughs> you're you should... wrong for wanting that dream <laughs> yeah <laughs> your opinion is wrong yeah so i i think that it might work but i don't know what do you guys think do you think that we is it does it get cringy that we like agree too much i don't know Maybe Josh is just a jerk. And yeah. we should all say F you, Josh. Yeah. 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 Leave that comment below. F you, Josh, if you disagree with Josh. 
<laughs> I'm gonna next time I go to D and D, I'm just gonna pull up the comment section in this video. Hey Josh, look at all this. <laughs> look at the top liked comment on this video. <laughs> F you, Josh. <laughs> Upvoted sixty nine times. <laughs> I mean, don't worry that I was the one that put it in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> worry about that. All right, we have one more story before we get started in the main main meat and potatoes. Ooh, it involves some brown and some pants. <laughs> I haven't heard the story yet. Uh, I'm just excited as you are. <laughs> um, I was debating whether or not I should share this story. No, you weren't. <laughs> Actually, right after it happened. <laughs> right after it happened, you messaged me and you're like, "I got a story for the podcast." <laughs> I just, all right. I think my exact words were not no preface, just a just out of the blue text to, to Scott was, I just shit myself. <laughs> I think I sent one solo question mark. Literally, yeah. <laughs> and then my response was, "Yup." <laughs> all right, so I'm in I'm in the hobby basement. <laughs> this is how it's related because it happened there. You're right, and I'm working away. On, uh, I think I was painting my Bolden type Nexus. And I asked you a question, Scott. Okay. Do you ever take a chance? I was going to, I thought you were going to ask me, like, how much do you love your hobby? <laughs> <laughs> do I ever take a chance? Yeah, I take chances. You say you take some chances? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I took a chance that morning. I took a chance at I was rumbly, a little rumbly. I'm a pretty regular, regular person when i say regular i mean my bowel system's pretty regular i know it's like i was in this two hour morning window or it's like it's gonna happen i'm gonna, mm -hmm, I'm gonna mm -hmm. go poo poo yeah but i'm like i don't feel like it's yet so i'm just like a little rumble and i'm just like I'm, I'm in the middle of putting on i think i was putting on some enamels or something that i was like in the middle of doing and then they got to go through with the uh with uh q-tip Right. Well, they before they cure all the way, they don't cure that fast. No, they don't. But in my mind, at the moment, I'm like, I got to get through all this, and I'm going to Q tip. And I'm I just, get it. I get I'm it. I'm just gonna squeeze it out a little bit, and uh, squeeze, and it went whoosh, <laughs> <laughs> like big whoosh, a bit pretty big whoosh. Oh, no. Enough, enough whoosh where you make this face. <laughs> Did that just happen? Yep. And then you kind of okay, you don't move, right? You just say perfectly still, because you're like, okay, ma'am. <laughs> Get the pants. <laughs> I'm like, all right, maybe it wasn't so bad. That's yeah. the first thing that goes in my head. Yeah. Maybe it was just a juicy fart. Maybe just a little juicy. <laughs> and then I moved a cheek. Oh, no. <laughs> and as I was down to slip and slide. <laughs> <laughs> and so oh, no. I freaking, I had to cowboy walk it up to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Um, assess the damage. What is the, what is our scenario? <laughs> Uh, and later I had to explain to my wife why I'm throwing my underwear away <laughs> outside. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm throwing my underwear away. She goes, I'm like, that's all you need to know. <laughs> Wait, did you throw your pants away too? No, it was, we're mostly good there. They went right in the wash, but I think. So the chair is fine? The chair is fine. Okay. We had enough layers of protection. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, which is good because I really like that chair and it doesn't smell. Jeez Louise. Um, this story um, goes out to our dear friend, Darren Latham. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I had, I had a feeling that's why I wanted to tell this story. Because I feel like Darren is, is rolling in tears right now because he told us his favorite parts of the podcast is when I made jokes about farts. Right, yeah. And yeah. so I feel like if there's anything I can do, it's it's juvenile humor. Right, yeah. It's one of my many talents. You're pigeonholing us right yes, now into, yes. the, into the fart poop pee jokes. Yes, which is a great place. I'm right in the groove. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so is there a moral to the story? One, there is. The first one is, life's short, take chances. Okay? <laughs> okay, so take those chances, and sometimes they're going to backfire. But yeah. you know what? You're going to have a great story to tell. Yeah, on the podcast. And you get to buy new underwear. Yeah. Because, you know, your underwear probably was needing a new, a new from set high anyway. school. You yes. know, it's those weird plaid ones. Holy. Super thin. Yeah. Now the holes really are uh, uh, something you need to worry about. Right, yeah. Because you don't want that sneaking out. Mm -mm. No. No, you don't. Um, my <laughs> oh, I think the other lesson here is that you can love your hobby too much. You can. You can say, I mean, if you're in the zone, we talked about flow state. Yeah. And some wonderful. Uh, There's the downside of flow state right there. <laughs> you shit yourself. <laughs> Pros, 
Super productive. Creative juice is flowing. Cons, shit your pants. I was going to say, BM juice is flowing. <laughs> <laughs> some great uh, sprues and spruettes actually went out and sent me some videos and some uh, articles and stuff on Flow State. I thought you were going to say they sent you <laughs> new underwear. <laughs> I was like, you reached out to our Facebook group that you need new underwear. Okay, Please anyway. help. Please send help. <laughs> okay. Um, Side uh, note to this story, because there's more. Um, what? There's more. Okay. Uh, I need to back up a second. I'm right now um, on a part-time furlough for work. So last week, all last week, I didn't work. All this week, I don't work. Then I go back to work the next week. Mm. Um, and so my daughter is still in school, second grader. And so I'm full-time teacher. And so she's down in in the hobby basement with me with her classroom set up, you know, and I'm helping her and she's going through her Google classroom stuff and her Skype meetings and all this stuff. And, um, she's busy working on her math workbook. And I shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> and right after it happens, when I make that face, she turns to me, looks over her shoulder <laughs> and she's like, what was that? <laughs> Why are you walking like that? And I'm still in like deer in a head, like, like frozen. You're like crying right now. <laughs> I'm frozen trying to explain to my seven year old daughter. <laughs> Daddy just shit his pants. Oh no. Um, and so she has to tell my wife like, her the story. And I'm like, well. You know, I look back at it. And You're I'm actually <laughs> crying. <laughs> I look back at it and I'm trying to like justify myself to my wife that like this is, this is normal. <laughs> and I'm like, honey, I probably haven't done this in like four years. She's four like, years. she's like, four years? When you didn't tell me last time? I'm like, what? Do you tell me? <laughs> she's, she's like, no, like, it never happens. <laughs> it never happens. I'm like, fine. Well, you need to take more chances. I'm telling her what I'm telling all of you. Life's short. Take more chances. Oh, my gosh. Okay. We need to move on. <laughs> all right. <laughs> New, <laughs> the, what? What's the next part? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> what we painted. What we painted. What we painted. Okay. All right. We painted the town brown. <laughs> <So we> painted. <laughs> yeah. okay. You go first, please. Right. Yeah. You can recuperate a little bit. Uh, I didn't paint anything. I kit bashed some blood knights, mm -hmm. and I assembled a large amount of uh, other Legion of Blood. So, man, I really underestimated how long it would take to assemble two vampire lords on zombie dragons. I, so, hilarious story. Um, my wife, I, I don't have a lot of stuff for my wife to do, but she does work for me uh, part-time. And mostly it's shipping and fulfillment of the vampires. I don't have any right now. She does uh, accounting and she does shipping and fulfillment of merch, which is a thing that's coming up. Um, but I don't have stuff to, stuff to do right now for her. And so I was like, Hey, can you assemble this zombie dragon for me? I was like, it's not that hard here. I'll show you. This is how you clean stuff. This is how you clip stuff out. This is how you glue stuff together. Just follow the things. They're all numbered on the sprue. It should be easy hmm. enough. They have pretty good instructions in those yeah. boxes. And the part that I was demonstrating to her on was, I'm not sure if you remember it, but it's the rib cage that glues onto the side and comes together to uh, meet in the middle with the third part with a little wishbone mm -hmm. triangle shaped thing. So it's it was one of those times where you need to coordinate multiple contact points at sure. once. It's probably the most complicated part of putting the thing together. Um, and she was like, "I'm not doing this. This looks way too complicated." And I was like, "Yeah, this is kind of this is kind of finicky." And I figured out a better way to do it on a second time around. Um, but yeah, I put together two of those guys. Um, had some fun with the bases, like I like to do. Uh, I put together. What did I put together? Some pewter vampires I had laying around. Um, I had two laying around that I'm super excited about. Um, and some other things that I can't remember right now. doesn't matter. But the thing that I'm most excited about is the Blood Knights. Mm -hmm. um, and I like to use this podcast as, an, as a platform to address comments that I get repeatedly <laughs> in the videos, which is fine. Yeah, that's good. So you, a question you may have is, Scott, why did you use uh, the Chaos horses instead of something that fit them better and the answer to that is i think that warhammer has the relationship between rider and horse wrong in terms of scale mm. horses are incredibly large beasts and humans aren't that big so i feel like this kind of fit 
yeah that relationship better especially when you have barding on the horses they're even bigger and bulkier right. so i like how they kind of look a little bit smaller uh than the normal stuff that was the first thing i got a lot and then another one was why didn't you just use dragon princes of calador from high elf the high elf range because everybody right. does everyone does it and they yeah. also they just look like elves still to yeah me. they do uh yeah. especially the mounts they have like those they have lots of flowy fabrics tons of gems all over them yeah and so you could you could use dragon princes of calador but you would just need to convert them just as much as i did the riders so for my for my horses i just had to fill eight pointed stars it was really easy yeah uh, but for for that thing maybe you need to do more conversion for the horses um so yeah you could do that if you want to mm. Um, and then maybe some other ones were like, you could just use these things from Manta games. I didn't like how they looked. Um, mm-hmm. so I don't know, but yeah, it was fun. I like it. I'm super happy with the result after I primed it. That's the biggest test whenever you prime it to see if yes. it looks like garbage. Yeah. Still looks great. Good. Uh, so I'm hyped. I'm going to paint it soon. I think that they're going to look even better painted than they did as bare plastic or primed. I think so. It kind of helps everything. Your kind of vision come together more in color. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because sometimes, at least when I've kit bashed stuff, there's the moment, even if it turned out pretty well, there's that moment of second guessing it once you see it all together, but it's still in gray plastic and the green stuff and all yeah. that, where it's just kind of like, I know this wasn't a, a true Games Workshop full model, and I it, I can see it. My eye sees that green from green stuff, and the media is like, oh, this doesn't go together. But it's funny how that can change quickly once there's paint on it. So. Yeah, yeah. And you can maybe hide some of that green stuff work that wasn't so great with, like, texture and stuff. So, yeah. And one nice thing about kit bashing is that I like that people ask these que- those questions in the comments, and they had all their ideas in the comments because that gives – that means that there's a ton of options. Yeah. Means there's a lot of opportunities. And it's not just like, oh, if you do Blood Knights and you don't want to spend the 100 bucks for five, you got to do those Dragon Knights, those Elven Dragon Knights, yeah. which is what everyone does because it's a pretty quick, easy kind mm-hmm. of Yeah, Blood Dragons, Dragon Princes. They have draconic themes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so they, that the fact that there's all these other options means that if somebody else wants to make something like that differently, theirs would look so much different than yeah. yours and this uniqueness. What I always wanted to do, what my plan was for my Blood Knights was to use the wolves, the Fenrisian wolves, as the mounts. What if you use the Thunderwolf cavalry wolves as the mounts? Oh, those the bigger ones? So you get this, dis- I mean, it wouldn't be wouldn't be cheap probably but you get this distinction between the dire wolves that you use mm-hmm. and then the cavalry they'd be bigger Ooh, more substantial i like that but i don't know if you could find those guys separate anywhere. are they uh, yeah they have sci-fi bits too on them oh because some of them have like robot eyes I yeah think. and like robot legs <laughs> oh Google right. gadget dog you could probably uh kind of shave that down and stuff to look like it's made of bone instead of robots so. that would be sick that's that would work okay now i'm excited plus the benefit of those over the fenrisian wolves is those are meant to be mounts so yes. the way that they have almost like a saddle or a spot for the legs to go in like yeah you've lived this recently where yes. it's like the rider legs <laughs> yeah can be a, a point of contention yeah. of the realism of it looks like a actual rider on there so those but are those plastic kits i thought they were older and i um, thought they were like fine cast or something but maybe i'm just making that up i've never opened it but my impression is that it's plastic you know what we're gonna go to the source today and we're gonna look they're there perfect i know they're there Shit, i saw I'm them recently spend 180 dollars on wolves make it happen okay All one right, thing though. i learned about blood knights recently is that blood dragons are an order why did I say it like that? Order. <laughs> <laughs> Man, okay, yeah. Uh, they're an order of blood knights. There are multiple orders of blood knights. Did you know this? There's no. like five or six. So I looked them all up and they all have their own kind of thing. Oh. Interesting side note. Okay, that's my story. That's great. That's what I did in the hobby. What did you do? What did I do? Well, then shit yourself. Uh, well, while I was shitting, I was working <laughs> on my bone tithe nexus, all which right. is finished. Nice. It's done, and it's freaking huge. Dude, um, nice. And of course, going back to getting comments, I've definitely got comments on Instagram on the pictures of this. Of, uh, you know, uh, I don't know why you didn't make it look like bone, and I don't know why you, I mean, you didn't kinda have did. armor. It, the, the whole thing is made of stone. I painted it that way. Okay, sure. Um, but all the bones are around the People are making that bones. comment? Yeah. Jeez. Well, and, and and people have said like, well, according to the lore, it's actually crafted by the bone shapers from bones. <laughs> and I'm like, 
Okay, what do they? I want to know what the process is for a bone shaper to take a pile of bones and like he can like he sends them through like a play doh extruder <laughs> and they come out like a <laughs> on the other side and they're just one big bone. It doesn't look like it's made of a bunch of bones. I don't get that. If you wanted it to be made of a bunch of smaller bones, that would make more sense. That would make, make more sense. That. Then yeah. I think that's a way cooler looking thing because there's all these bumps of all the bones Stitched pushed together. together. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. like, okay, I would totally paint that leg bone. This just kind of looks like a big statue to me. So, but, um, looks sick. I, it was, feels very cool to have something that big painted. Oh yeah. Um, and in the after party today, I'm going to talk about one thing new that I was working on in that piece. And that is how to make, all the gems look so shiny okay or vibrant so okay and then i started my a kingdom death model the white lion the who, first encounter the first encounter um painting that all in oils oh yeah because i think it's a good model to kind of start on because it's got a lot of organic shapes it's pretty big as far as minis go and so i'm painting it with counter light sources like it's walking towards the lanterns or it's coming like the, the survivors are huddled with lanterns and it's coming out from the darkness of the night. Absolutely. And it, it's faces in the light. Yes. And then on its back, um, is a faint blue glow of the night sky. The moonlight. The moonlight. So really cool with the oils, man. Yeah. Oils are so cool. Yeah. It's so stupid. What, what are you? What are you? Are you using the the miniature brand ones? Which ones are you using? Yeah, I'm using Abtulung five hundred twos. I did order a uh, titanium white and an ivory black of Windsor and Newton artist grade, which are the highest grade Windsor and Newtons okay. of, of both of those colors, because okay. you end up mixing a fair amount and you use those more. Um, and in all the add to lungs I have, I don't have a pure black and a pure white. I have something that's called snow white, which is not quite titanium white, not quite as like super bright, bright, but it's still a fairly pure white. Okay. And then something called smoke, which isn't black, but it's pretty, pretty dark. Okay. But I want a pure white and pure black. But sure. yeah, I'm using those. I undercoated it all with airbrush with acrylics. Right. So you just did all the base coat and I did like a psh, psh, where the moonlight would be and then a in the front where it's going to be the lantern light. Yep. And then I just built off of that. Okay. So now I have to wait until my AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish comes in the mail because I had to order that. Mm. Do you, got, where do you get this? Do you get it off of their site? I bought this one on Amazon. Up until, well, this was just last Thursday, I think that I ordered it. For m months, you couldn't find it on eBay or on Amazon. Well, you could just get it off of their site. You can get it off their site, but because it's international for us. Oh my gosh. The <sighs> shipping, what you'd end up paying. I just go through the people that I buy through on eBay and on Amazon have, they're like actual stores that are s suppliers in the United States, like Michigan Toy Soldier and stuff like that. Yeah. So I go right through them because on those sites, they offer free shipping through eBay. When, if you go right to their site, you might need to spend 30 or 50 bucks to get free shipping and if i was yeah. if i was a smart consumer i would just kind of wait and then buy a bunch of stuff and get the free shipping through them so they charge a little bit more on ebay which they should um but anyway so i order that and so i need to wait till that to come so i can varnish it mat it down still a little bit of gloss to it and then figure out what i'm going to do next I, I don't know if i want to use dimitri's next steps of of painting that where you do a second pass of oils with the more transparent yeah. versions of oils. I bought the extra stuff to, I can't remember what it's called, Jalop or something. Oh. That you add to you oil paints in, yeah. to make some tra more transparent. Yeah. So I have that. So I might do a little bit of that and add some more pop, more depth and stuff like that. Are you recording this process? I did record the first one. Yep. Nice. The first. I didn't record the airbrushing of of it with acrylics which i think is fine right like if i mean i probably should have yeah i think a good rule of thumb is record everything yeah and then if you don't need it you just don't use it i didn't think about that i was going to do this i, I was That's just more fine. of a self-experiment so i didn't think about it until i sat down with the oils and i had my whole oil thing set up and i was like oh gosh oh wait no it's not fine you, it's not fine you did it wrong you're stupid i'm an idiot i'm trying to be i'm trying to be more argumentative yeah aggressive yeah. no yeah. it's fine truly I think it's cool that 
you not necessarily you don't have a schedule right now but if you're just going around hop, going along and hobbying if you just record this stuff you can almost make like a backlog of stuff to make right. videos about i have two of those thus far that i did that it's like i don't have any specific plan for this footage but i threw them in a folder and my videos folders and like i have a whole videos folder nice. now nice so if i have some need for them the first one i have to scrap entirely because that was before i you helped me with the setting up the camera oh. correctly <laughs> Um, I did set it up correctly, but I set it up f under that, um, that like masterclass thing you sent me, yeah, yeah, his yeah. version. Yeah, yeah. And he uses the natural setting, yeah. which looked pretty good for like outside or talking head and stuff. Yeah. But in retrospect, how it looked for the filming of minis, painting minis did not work. So I have right. a whole mini that I painted there and I really stand behind what I learned. That was the Rodrigo Acore video, uh, but I want to redo it. Sure. Yeah. Because I really like that style. I'm going to paint another mini like that anyway. So. Yeah. Speaking of Rodrigo Acore, and I don't, I don't understand why I did this. I mean, I don't need to understand. He made a wonderful PDF guide about painting a blood angel. I haven't read it or anything, but I briefly looked through it, and it's got nice pictures in it, and he describes every single step, and it seems to be formatted nicely. Mm -hmm. um, we'll link it in the show notes below for you to go check out. It's a free PDF. And he's like, more to come. And I was like, that's, okay. That's nice. Yeah. It, it, uh, so I was telling John this, like in, in the in the community of professional painters, for someone to make deliberately formatted PDFs and then release them for free on his Instagram, that's not normal. Mm -mm. Mostly it's just Patreon paywall mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's cool. Go check it out. You can see how he paints a Blood Angel Space Marine. And also, if you don't like Blood Angel Space Marines, just don't think of it as a space marine. He still paints a great skin tone. He paints a really cool red. And so you can just take that knowledge and apply it to something else. Yeah. Yeah. Look at it through the, the process of which he painted something. Yeah. Rather than the exact model he painted. Yeah. Um, I think there is some value there to offer such a thing if it, if it was became more widespread and then people really, really like it. And then he offers it as well on a Patreon. I don't know if he does or not. And then they'd be, I want more. That's, right. This was really valuable. Get a taste. Get a taste. And, you know, everyone wants free samples. Right. right? Sample day, right? Free samples are great. Yeah. I end up buying so many more things at Costco if there's a free sample. And I'm like, <laughs> mm, that was delicious. It works. I'm going to buy a box of so, 80 of them. I have a question for you. So you've assembled all your OCR Bone Reapers, right? Yes, I have. So this is not at all related to Rodrigo Acore. Okay. But I thought of it right now. Do you ever get them out and just put them out and look at them? I did that right after I had them all put together. Okay, okay. But after you painted that bone tithe nexus, did you get them and like arrange them around the bone tithe nexus just to kind of look at it? I haven't yet, no. Okay. You play toys? Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, I kind of play toys. <laughs> okay. I uh, Once I finished assembling and priming all my, my vampires, I, like, I kind of arranged them in a cool way. Like, <laughs> Hell yeah. Pew, pew. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to know in the comment section below if any sprudes or spruettes do something like that where you just admire, even if it's unpainted, your uh, your little army that you've been working mm -hmm. on and stuff like that. I think that's a good idea. I think, it, I mean, I don't know if it's a good idea. <laughs> it's only that I do it occasionally. Yeah. You like put your, your face down on, on like eye level to the table yeah, so you can like, like see him in the moment. I'm in this army. No. <laughs> no. I, I think especially... I mean, I, I don't have a painted army, but I think one day when I have a painted army, one day I'm gonna I'm gonna do that for sure. Okay, okay, cool. Not just to take pictures, like that'll be my excuse. Like, oh, I'm putting these all out like this to take some pictures of yeah, the army. I'm just rolling out the fog machine just for the pictures, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and the sound effects streaming in the background. <laughs> so this is for the photos. <laughs> <laughs> Strobe light going, disco ball. <laughs> Certainly, it's a rave. No, all right. Uh, so. I think the next part of this podcast is the, is the topic. Yeah. Did we talk? Did you say your thing at the beginning where you always say the t uh, podcast about miniature enthusiasts? No, I didn't. If you're still here, <laughs> you probably figured out that this is a podcast for the miniature hobby enthusiast. Talk about all things miniature painting, miniature hobby. We like it all. But topic for today is projects, miniature projects that we've dreamt of and haven't done yet and hope to do someday and while why we are excited about doing them and these can be any number of things from display miniatures to uh larger scale things like whatever we're going to talk about mm -hmm. so i'll go first okay um i think an area that 
I wish it would I would could be more explored in miniature painting is longer form story. So, uh, actually, you know what? Before we even talk about this, whoa, whoa, whoa! Back it up. I brought this topic up to you in <laughs> the first thing you said, which was sort of a joke, sort of not a joke. Was yeah. you want to give away our secrets? Yeah. Three question marks. So kind of a joke. Three question marks. So there is some truth to this. And the first time I experienced this was when competitive miniature painters wouldn't show what they were painting on Facebook until after the event. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense to me. They, uh, they don't want the competition to know the level of effort or, or have any means of comparison to what they've done Mm -hmm. to, up the ante uh, or anything like that. Yeah. So that makes sense. But then going one level further, just the idea. So talk to me about this. Why why were you apprehensive about this? Because if I have an idea and it's a great idea Mm -hmm. and somebody that's a lot better miniature painter than me does it before me because these people paint faster and better than me, (laughs) then the idea is gone, right? Now someone else did it and they did it awesome. At painting, listens to this, everyone, they, they all just like, oh, those two idiots are talking again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think probably most of the people that listen to this podcast are in our our pool. Yeah, right? for yeah, sure. Solid miniature painters. Solid you guys, sprues and spruettes, you're solid, right? Yeah. Come absolutely. on. Get I've shit together. I, okay, we might get shit for not talking a lot in our Facebook group, but I routinely go through the posts and just look at them just to see what people are talking about and stuff. And I'll, 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 reply on comments that are specifically asking us questions um like about the podcast or if we plan to do a drunk mini painting episode Mm. i said hell yes (laughs) um but yeah uh there are some very talented people in that facebook group yes very very much so so thank you guys please give us your juices through the ether so we can become better (laughs) we'll suck up your juices like (laughs) like ecto cooler um this is the point in the podcast where we decide, does Scott know what Ecto Cooler is? Is it a reference to Ghostbusters? It is a reference to Ghostbusters, yes. Okay. Then then you kind of know. I passed the test. Okay, sure. Yeah. Is Ecto Cooler a thing that's used on their packs? Ecto Cooler is a real product in the real world. Oh my God. Have you heard of High C? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in the like late 80s, early 90s, there was a High C flavor called ecto cooler really off of the ghostbuster movies oh. and they had the picture of slimer on it and okay it was green i don't know what flavor it was to this day but we as kids in that era it was like you had ecto cooler you were the shit at <laughs> you, lunch you had ecto cooler in the fridge when yeah people came over right yeah it's like sunny d like, dude speaking of childhood did you do sleepovers when you were f yeah i did okay because because like my, my parents never did sleepovers I did them a ton. Land parties were a huge thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, okay, when, when did that start? The whole yeah, sleep we And we still, we still kind of do it. Yeah, we do. We yes. do sleepovers. <laughs> <laughs> like that's, okay, anyways. Anyways, about sharing ideas. You're just concerned that someone is going to come along, take your idea, and execute on it faster than you. Faster and better. And better. Yeah, faster and better. Because then, boom, okay. it's out there. They've done it. And now it's like... I deflated. I'm not going to do really? it now. There's no satisfaction knowing that you are the originator of the idea. I can't prove that. There's this. Yeah, that's true. I can prove it now. Yeah. <laughs> if anybody ever does the things that I'm about to say before I do them, this is a dated, released thing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. They're not that cool of ideas, so no one's going to do them anyway. Sure. <laughs> right, right, right. That, that's what I'm saying. Or yeah. my ideas are so ridiculous. No sane persons, including me, are ever going to do them. I've got one that's quite ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. all right. I, 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 mean, I said that kind of jokingly, kind yeah, of yeah. serious, but I'd, I don't care. I think it's more fun to talk about them, get yes. excited about them, get the sprues and spruettes, their juices flowing. There, so you're yeah. thinking about something cool that excites you, and then they'll give you shit to do that idea yeah. endlessly. Yes, they will. That's it, my hey. favorite, that's my favorite part <laughs> <laughs> of you constantly ragging me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what are you gonna do this? No. Okay. <laughs> so, like I was saying, miniature painting dioramas are often a moment in time, uh, right before someone gets killed, uh, right before some something happens. And I want something that shows a story over a period of weeks, months, days, whatever. And so I had this ridiculous idea 
I really like descent into madness stories. And I've told you about this before. Mm-hmm. Um, I like it when a character that is seemingly innocent becomes totally corrupted. Uh, and so I had this idea that I, uh, kind of got from a book by Jonathan green called necromancy. It's a black library book. And it's uh, about a normal, uh, wizard who becomes a necromancer. And so the idea for the diorama is this three scenes on a spinning electronic lazy Susan. The top scene is a boy, a uh, young adult weeping over the loss of someone, his mother or his sister. I want it to be. And they're in like a, a, you know, a thatched roof kind of scenario. It's, 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 it's old timey. Thatched roof cottages. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that funny? <laughs> thatched roof cottages. This is a reference I don't get. Burninating the countryside. <laughs> Wait, they say thatched. Oh, that, that's what that lyric is. <laughs> yes. I've never known. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Trog dark. Cool. Okay. Uh, anyways, first scene's that. It's the highest most scene. Second scene, which you can see once the Susan kind of rotates a little bit more down the Susan. <laughs> it's just, just title the piece Susan. Susan. Uh, so second one, he's got his hand on a on a book, and now he's in the cellar of his of his of his thoughts from Canada. Uh, he's got his hand on a book and he's got his hand on like the head of whoever died and he's like channeling something evil and like the like the, the person's eyes are like glowing and like they're kind of like writhing and like maybe his hands glowing a little bit third scene the person is resurrected fully they got a rope around their neck and they're tied to a post because they're trying to eat him and of course the the moral of the story is you can't get back what you lost it's gone forever your mom your sister is not going to be the same person you lost it and you've dabbled in things that changed the 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 core of your humanity so every single scene gets lower and it's on a a battery powered thing so i can put it in a display case and it rotates and it just descends into mm. it literally descends literally yeah so i've always want I, I, that's that's a thing that would be super cool to do very difficult multiple scenes it's the kind of thing that you, that could be three different entries over a course of a period that you could see which someone has done before mm. um which is really cool um but i want to do it on one all in one see i picture it like a big cylinder yes yeah absolutely so it's almost like to help us through and through, at least from my, how I visualize this, is you took up a, a cylinder like the size of a Pringles can. I don't know. Yeah. Just a shape. Um, whatever. Um, and you almost like cutting out stairs, but you'll have three stairs, plunk, 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 as Absolutely. you spin around and yes. go down the cylinder. And each of those is a separate scene. And so I even like the idea of having in like the in the back of the each scene an actual set of physical stairs that yeah. that is descending down. Yes. And so in the last one, it's the stairs from the basement that are descending up. Yeah. So it's like the three levels of his house is upstairs, main floor and basement. Interesting. Right. And the fact that you have it on the lazy Susan, this is kind of tying into one of my crazy ideas later, but it's, it's a fact there's movement. Yes. In the display case, it's mm. slowly moving. Nothing else is moving. Nothing else is moving. Yeah. In that display case. It's kind of like die midday Saturday. <laughs> yeah. You got <laughs> to do some testing on those little batteries. Yeah, like, long they last. Like, like you got to pass the judges some batteries every now and then. <laughs> it's like, hey, can you replace this for me, please? Please do this i'm gonna i'm gonna give you three of these little chinese lazy susans that i got <laughs> just pop them out yeah pop them i'm like yeah just swap them out and yeah. one dies swap it's, a, them it's out. a pringles can it's it, it, it's it's built for this just pop right off <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's actually made from a pringles can so now you know how you can make that there's the base pringles can. boom um all right so that's your first one yeah that's that's good yeah that's good so when we're talking about our dream pieces here um you know, that's kind of a first look into this is from a, a, a dream perspective from a, like high aspirations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my first one, I'm going to, I'm going to make it a pretty, you know, low hanging fruit. Yeah. I kind of went I, for the gusto right away. Yeah, you did. I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm choosing a bust to, in the nut. you know, to have a crescendo. Okay. So oh, you, you think I, you think I'm topping out. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's getting better. No, it's not. It's getting worse. <laughs> so my first one is my, my dream project is to have a fully painted army. <laughs> I think I would I would question how many of our Spruce and Spruettes have a fully painted army that they painted that Oh, okay, okay. that 
they're like, I guess it doesn't need to be so proud of it that it's the best p- work you've ever done. But sure. you look at it and you're like, yes. Yes. You know? What it, counts as a fully painted army? To me, it's, I never need to go back to it with another paintbrush again. Sure. No, I understand. How many models, points. Oh, good point. I mean... Like is my it's, is my wood elf army is that a fully painted army? I would call a fully painted army that you can play a game at its intended point value. Okay. Uh, okay. And everything's painted to be an army. Sure. So for for most of this, I'm thinking two thousand points of Age of Sigmar. Two thousand points. Okay. Two thousand points. That's a frame that you're operating. Yeah. Because okay. okay. technically, we have painted armies in Guild Ball. Yes. But they're like seven models. Yes. So still felt good to finish that though, didn't it? It did feel good. Do you want them back? By the I way, I probably should get those back. Yeah, I've had them for like I'm in my special gun case. Yeah, it oh, carries everything. It's designed just dice. just for that. That's so. It's just like a, a unit. Mm-hmm. I don't need anything else other than this case. Whoop, gone. I'm ready to play Guild Ball and lose terribly. <laughs> <laughs> get so fucking frustrated at that game. <laughs> Just let me score, Scott. <laughs> you can score. I can score one time. One time. Yeah. I score one time. I feel awesome. And it then is. it's just a slow descent to madness. It's impossible to stop that first goal. And I no. hate it. I know. I just fucking go like dunk on your ass. I just dunk. <laughs> and then I'm like, you know, I'm doing like the holding up my hand as I'm back going backwards towards half court. <laughs> In the meantime, I am going down the Pringles can <laughs> descent into madness for the rest of the game. I just can't do shit. That's like, the morticians, man. Uh, you just do nothing but frustrate. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They're frustrating for yeah, sure. Yeah, I think it's in like if you go to Steamforge's website and it says like how each how each team plays, it's just one word. <laughs> frustrating. <laughs> That's the all they do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that felt really good. So I, I just I want to have an army. That's two thousand point game for me. That's it. Two thousand points of Age of Sigmar. Sure. And I want that painted. Yeah. And here's what's gonna happen. I'm going to get it done. I have a plan. Okay. I have a plan to do it in a weekend. I think I know the plan. Yeah. I talked about this when I was on uh, the last um, Warhammer Weekly. I was on with Vincey V and Tom. It's Tommy me. Boy. And um, I call him Tommy Boy now, too, which I don't know oh, if anybody geez. is going to like that. Do they, do they even hear you? Do they respond when you say Tommy Boy and Vincey they V? They pretend I'm not there. Okay. It's like the kids' table at Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> right. They're like, you're here, but like, you... shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um. But I talked about this that, you know, I, I completely lost my train of thought. I was on. Here's your plan. Here's uh, my plan. I'm going to paint them all. Okay. Yes. I talked about this. I'm yeah. going to paint them all in a weekend. Yeah. Because nobody has ever done a video about painting in an army in a weekend before. No one. No one's ever done it. And I said that specifically because Vince has done it twice on his YouTube channel. Oh. <laughs> so, and so I, this is my brown, groundbreaking idea that okay. no one's ever done. So Vince don't steal my idea. Right. Oh, so, you said that? Yeah, I said that. Did he flip a table or? No, he, I mean, he knew that I was jesting. Was okay. Saying, okay. So, you know, he's smart. He's a smart guy. I would have flipped the table. Yeah. You are you kidding it. me? I like spam the link. In I the do chat. all this. I do all this. Yeah. He's he's much more uh, of an adult. Of an adult. Yeah. 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 He just his maturity level is what it should be for <laughs> for his age. <laughs> <laughs> all um, right. So I just I want I want to do that in a week. And here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna get that army painted. Yeah. In the next week, the next week, they're gonna announce Vampire Army for Age of Sigma. <laughs> They're going to do it. I'm going to be like, I have my death army painted. And they'll be like, actually, we got a new vampire army coming out in August. And I'll be like, fuck you. (laughs) Fuck you, skeleton guys. Throw them in the garbage. Come on, vampires. Oh, yeah. Uh, A lot of my patrons are like, they're saying it's coming. It's coming. coming. You see this? You see this bone flute thing? It's like, yeah, dude, it's it's flesh eater courts. It's not going to be vampires. Mm. Stop. Stop I heard there's, and I, I didn't look into it else, but I heard there's other signs, recent signs that are all leading whatever to, to the great darkness. Oh, whatever. Okay. I'll be super happy, but I am, my expectations are six feet under. <laughs> I have no expectations because it goes back to that thing we discussed a long time ago, whereas if it's an IP they can't own, they're not going to pursue it as strongly as something like Stormcast Eternal. Mm-hmm. Or OCR Bone Reapers, whatever the hell that is. It's going to be, if they, my prediction is if they do it, it's going to be like the pirate vampires. It's oh, God, be, please no. It's going to be something where they have a, a, 
a specific visual aesthetic around it. And they're vampires, but that's not what the army will be called. It will be called like the Dread Fleet. Ocean Tide Blood Suckers. <laughs> Dread, Dread Fleet was much cooler. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know. Ocean Tide Blood Suckers has got a certain <laughs> ring to it. Okay, yeah. I, anyway, I'm i kind of a snob about vampires. Pirate vampires are so stupid. Because to me, vampires are so eloquent and put together, and pirates are so rowdy and drunk and like boisterous. Yo, ho, ho. Yeah, also, the two together. Also, okay, here's the thing with vampires. Also, <laughs> think about this. <laughs> it's daytime. Vampires can't be out. Shit, we're on pirate ships. We gotta all go under the decks. Now, what the hell happens? We're fucked. If someone comes up on our pirate ship, all the vampires are sleeping. We're all safely under under the decks. You moor somewhere at during the day. This seems overly complex that you can't ever cross any body of water that takes more than 16 hours to get to. <laughs> no, you have zombies operating the ship. Well, yeah, good luck actually winning some kind of sea battle with only zombies at the helm. Like, you're the zombie captain when the, when the vampire captain's asleep during the day. He's like... <laughs> it's like, he, like vampire wakes up like where are we he's like uh. <laughs> he's just drifting way off course like, that's why they're stuck god at, damn it Fred that's why it took him like six years of Age of Sigmar to release the army because they've been, been coming but it just takes a long time on been, that boat yeah it's been in the seas lost yeah. forever I, can, I okay you're not the first person telling me about pirate vampires I don't know what your thoughts are on that but I'm at a red flag no go I don't want that, but it doesn't matter what I want. But it I will really not. Doesn't. I will not buy it no. unless I can convert it to look like a vampire that I like. Sure, I I think it. it I'll answer this in the safest way possible. It depends. It you, depends. There's, there's a chance that you might like it. It. I, there was a chance I would like vampire pirates because it's vampires. Sure. And if they did pirates, like if the pirates looked more like Captain Jack Sparrow and less like. I don't know what's the what's the book where Blackbeard this is like over the top vamp or over the top pirate. You don't looking. think Captain Jack Sparrow looks over the top pirate? He he looks he looks like a pirate. He looks me. he looks like a hobo pirate. Okay, like he like they're like worn and ragged and mischievous and devious. Not I mean, he is drunk too. Yeah, not like he's not like a chubby red faced dude with a peg leg and a pirate, <laughs> and a or a, but not a not a pirate, a parrot. Okay, <laughs> and a hook for a hand, and a hook for a hand. Right, right, right. Because you know they'd have one of those. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it would suck. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm hoping that that isn't the case, but maybe. We spent too much time on me talking about my dream pirate or my dream pirate. Oh no! <laughs> my dream project being a painted army. So let's move on back to you. Moving on. About about having a painted army, I've always wanted to have a painted something in every system. A painted mm. Malifaux team, a painted Infinity team, a painted Blood Bowl team, a painted Guild Ball team, a painted Age of Sigmar army, a painted 40k army. I've always wanted to have something in everything, which is impossible. Yes. But. That's not impossible. That's but not a dream. I'm not, that's you're not, not going to play those games. I know, but it's just like, I, I have everything in case someone's like, hey, can we all play this? It's like, yeah, sure. I got that. I got that. You want got that? It. I got that. It's like, oh, Scott, you want everything. Okay. It's right. Like, you know, you can't have everything. You glutton. Yeah. This, exactly. this is us being more controversial and more argumentative. You're a glutton. Yes. Quit wanting everything. I know. Do one thing and oh do it well. Oh, gosh. You suck at all the other things. Okay. That's my life. I just <laughs> suck at everything, but I'm okay at everything, too. <laughs> what? That doesn't make any sense. Okay. You're okay in a sucky kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Moving on. Uh, so I had this idea for uh, an entry at, at Golden Demon. It's not the Fish Boy. It's not that one. Mm. That one, kind of over that. I don't even know I wanted to do that. I like the cover of the book. Never mind. Anyways, <laughs> I like this. Uh, there's this idea that I had of painting an ogre sitting on top of a pile of corpses, uh, twiddling a flower in his hand, and. Maybe in his other hand, he has a partially eaten dwarf or elf or human leg. And I really like this idea of juxtaposing the violent side of Warhammer and Warhammer 40K with the whimsical side, which doesn't often get seen. Mm -hmm. And also, ogres are stupid. They have pea-sized brains, and they're good at smashy-smash. Yeah, they are. That's, but so, Hence you know, the pile of corpses. Exactly. So he just slaughtered a bunch of people, and now he's just chilling out, and he's like, what's this? 
this yellow daisy. Mm -hmm. So I like that idea. I want to try it at some point. It doesn't seem too terribly difficult other than trying to find a ogre face that looks whimsical. Mm. Yeah. Kind of looking off longingly. There's or... a Blood Bowl one for the Blood Bowl team that's kind of like, Arr. you know? Oh. Kind of has that, oh, that sound again? going on. You know, it's kind of, it's on your dog makes when it does oh, the head the cock. cock. The head? Yeah, 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 exactly. When the dogs don't actually make that sound, they, but in our head, that's what we hear the sound they're making. Where did that sound come from? I don't know. I think it's probably from Scooby Doo or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got that reference. I know ah. Scooby-Doo. All right. Zoinks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, let me one-up you here. And, okay. And the kinds of things that, that so far that you've been sharing is kind of the realm I'm going to go into a little bit here too, which is about telling a story. And a lot of these are our dream ideas, our dream projects, um, as you probably can hear at this point are less about a specific, very specific thing. It's about an idea or a emotion or a design. Sure, yeah. Um, it's not like, I want to paint this model well. Oh, yeah, it's not about a specific model. Yeah. Um, so one that I'll jump into, and there's not a lot of depth to this other than um, it's so simple, it's going to be incredibly difficult. Oh. And that is, um, I want to paint a scene um, in the rain. Yes. So I want to paint, I don't know if it's a miniature diorama or if it's just a model on a base that you can look at it and tell that it's raining. <sighs> torrential rain? I don't know yet. It's got to, I mean, torrential rain suddenly it, at such a small scale and there's not a lot of like square footage to see the ground around can be quickly hard to, to, to decipher that. Right. Um, something like there's, there's puddles, there's spots where you can see where drops are hitting yes um well there's a certain amount of wetness and we're not talking gloss varnish we're not no. painting with that it's all the shine and the, the dimensions of of what rain creates even when you can't see the raindrops falling you can look at a painting and tell it's raining right so taking some ideas from traditional 2d art and 2d painting and trying to replicate that in three dimensions so it's the basic idea. It's it's a pretty simple idea. Paint a rain scene. Mm -hmm. um, and how to pull that off, I don't know. And it's entirely possible that someone's already done this in the miniature painting world. I have never seen it. Yeah, I've seen the water droplet thing. I don't know if I've seen the model painted to look like it is yep. in a rainy scene. And to, and to clarify, I'm not, I mean, I'm going to say I'm not, but I'm not going to be like using resin to look like little splashes. I'm not going to take a piece of little fishing line and have it look like raindrops are actually falling. Why wouldn't you do that? I don't know. I think I think using the stuff like the fish lines and stuff like that, that's a bit silly. No, it's not. I think the, it is. Well, that's 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 your base work. That helps sell the illusion you're developing. Yes. I think you're some... Not, you can't paint that. What? No, you. I mean, then it comes down to the the style of rain right if it's a drizzle there's not like big splashes every sure time yeah, 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 yeah okay. and then it's how are the ring outlet of rings that are creating the water that's what i'm talking about on the Little, surface very small ripples yes you're still gonna make those physically though right i don't think you have to i think if you do it right it, at scale how tiny would the ripple actually be would you need to sculpt something no but okay so yeah you're right the scale might not be right but Heroic skill exists for a reason. Space Marine heads are gigantic for a reason. True. So I feel like it might just help the physicality of it to have some small ripples that you make with like Mod Podge gloss. Sure, sure, sure. I don't know. Yeah. yeah maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Again, it's Dream Project. Dream Project. Uh, you're still you're still getting the details worked yeah. out. This one I actually have <laughs> a model and a base made for it. Okay. But i after I had them all constructed, it's not a it's a kit bash, everything's kit bash for it. I now I'm second guessing if my footprint of the ground will be enough to sell. That's what it is. Because if you have too little of a base, it can be very hard to sell something like that. Right. There needs to be just enough square footage for you to see some dichotomy between, oh, this one's actually a big puddle and you could see the reflection of all the light from the city above or whatever yes. in that like sketchy kind of way. Okay, the reason why I asked about torrential downpour was because I'm sure you've thought of this. 
But if if it's raining heavily on something, you can actually see waves of water rushing down something. Mm. So I, immediately, I thought of a Space Marine shoulder pad, just because it's a giant surface. Mm-hmm. You have like a wave of you know raindrops coming down, and like the the curl of the wave would have a a, a, a bright specular highlight, and maybe mm-hmm. the rest of it would distort the surface a little bit. I have no idea how you would do that. <laughs> I I would never do this. <laughs> it's, it's, Never. See, it seems like to me like something that you very easily could not pull it off and then it just kind of looks weird yeah maybe you just bite off more than you can chew kind yes. of thing like the, i think what i just said don't do that don't do that don't okay. do that i yeah. don't know i think that's a waste of time all right there's mine there's yours back to you back to me i feel like all of mine are just d- display minis i feel like yeah my i mean i want to have a painted army too but like who doesn't? Who doesn't? Right? Who that doesn't, doesn't, doesn't make you special. Mm. You loser. Don't you have? Do you, you are wrong a, for wanting that. Do you have are a dream you, that like you do you want? Josh? You want a mini you've painted to like be in White Dwarf or something? Is oh that something God. you like? That's a different tact. Hmm. Yeah, I want to win a Slayer Sword. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow, way to go, Scott! Real creative. <laughs> uh, yeah, that'd be super cool to have a model that I painted be in white dwarf someone was like scott if you paint these blood knights they'll get in white dwarf and i was like no they won't i use non gw bits no they won't uh (laughs) just just two heads come on gw it's just two heads okay no anyways uh yeah that'd be cool i never thought about that i've always wanted to win something at golden demon that's a thing back to you no (laughs) i've wanted to win an award no um i have this diorama idea called prey sight some people know about this. Uh, so back in the day of Crystal Brush, RIP, uh, there were a there were two categories, very very normal. They exist in Golden Demon, single sci fantasy, <laughs> single sci fi and single fantasy. Yeah. Um, and the the main trick is you only got one mini to work with. So it's like, how do you? I hate saying tell a story, but how do you tell a story with one mini? It's not right. that hard. It's not that hard. Uh, you could do it. Uh, but one idea I had, because I had recently finished Aaron Dembski Bowden's trilogy on Night Lords, which are the most badass mm. Chaos Space Marine Legion. Um, and They're uh, like vampire marines. Yeah. I mean, yeah, oh, yeah. come on. They're kind of like vigilante, Batman-y, vampire-y All people. Right. They're cool. They're very, and also, they're, they're, like, they're like kind of poor. <laughs> they don't got nice stuff. Oh. So they're kind of on the ropes all the time. So all they got they're is... They're scrappy. All they got is like old blue armor and weird wings on their helmets. Yeah, and like, they got like bullets in their arm. And like, they can't fix their stuff. Oh, they really? They scavenge it from other people. Well, they, they do have... I can't remember the name, but there's these, these dudes that fix stuff. Um, they don't have many of those dudes. Mechanics? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Car mechanics, yeah. Uh, they don't have many of those dudes to go around, so oh. they often have to go to battle with partially working equipment, and they often steal it from other people nice. that they murder because they're just more talented. They don't need, you no. know. This just is, think of how powerful they'd be if they had good shit. This is an old lesson that my mom taught me. She was like, you want to learn how to skateboard? Here's a Walmart board. Show me 10 tricks. If you can do 10 tricks, then you can get a nicer one. It's like, okay, that's kind of what's going on here. <laughs> how about like, two? Use the <laughs> shitty Mark III <laughs> yes. power armor. Once you're better, then you can get nice fancy stuff. Oh. Talos. Yeah. So instead, you just sprained both your ankles, and <laughs> <laughs> guess I don't get that skateboard. And I go back to playing WoW. Yes. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, anyways, Prey Sight. It's the name. Of Pre- it's called Prey Sight because night uh, night lords have a cring, they have a, a heat vision or a, a human vision or whatever you want to call it. They can turn on and they can see people in the dark because the way that they attack oftentimes is is subterfuge mm. it's sneaky so the lights go wow they they jam your comms they come in they take your children your wives and they're out they're like predator yeah hmm. yeah exactly um so prey site is his idea was i have a night lord in some pose preparing to slaughter some innocent who is about to turn a corner that he should not turn. And he's looking at a wall and he can see the heat signature of a body. And he's standing there with his gladius ready just to and just take him away and kill him or do something with him. Uh, and so this is cool. It's a cheat way of adding a second character into a yes. scene without needing a model. Yes. Um, so yeah. And I like the name. It's called Prey Sight. Yeah. And you could see the heat signature on the wall. Like, yeah. That's such a cool idea. So like half the scene is kind of bathed in red scan lines and then you can see the, the dude and then the other half is painted normally. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, I've had this idea for a while. Those books are fantastic. I love them and I want to do it. That is a great one. That is a great one. Thank you. All right. My next, how many more do you have? I could be done. Okay. I have, I have two more, so I'm okay. going to rattle them off. Okay. Right. The first one is, I'm going to do the, the, the short one first. The first one is I want to have a paint a piece that moves. So kind of to your Pringle can idea, but, but there the are, the there movement? are artists out there that make these tiny, tiny little sculptures that they, and they're almost like on a little box or something. They have a little handle, like a do, 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 like a like jack in the, the box. box. Okay. Yeah. And, and you turn, you turn that crank in this tiny little sculpture, like it moves, like the wings on the dragonfly move and like there's blowing in the reeds and whatever. What? And they're not like, minis but they're they're tiny they're miniature yeah but they're all like sculpted by hand and yeah, like yeah. i want to take actual minis and figure out and you have like a tiny little battery that i'll steal from your pringles can <laughs> <laughs> in the bottom and so it just it automatically slowly turns that crank yeah and so it's a you know it's a vampire taking flight with wings and the wings actually slowly move that's really cool. I don't have the engineering capabilities probably to pull that off. I got the cheats that you can do that with. You know, people would do those like hovering things that are floating with two electromagnets. Yeah. Why don't you just get a vampire and put that in him so he's kind of like floating? Because they kind of rotate a little bit while they're Yeah, they it. do. That'd be kind of cool. They that would wings be funny. They're floating. It'd be funny. What do you mean it'd be funny? It'd be fu- there's like, there's a shack like- in the box. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> Am I funny to you? <laughs> um, all right. And then my last one is something that um, that I was going planning for as a diorama for a Golden Demon this oh. year. Ooh. And um, it's just titled Haunted. And, and the, the purpose of this piece is to think about, can we evoke more in-depth emotions from our miniatures? Sure. And to do that, I'm attempting to try to show something that a scene that we as humans in the year 2020 can relate to. Mm -hmm. Okay. So haunted is, it describes um, a traumatic experience by the, the, the piece or by the person portrayed. And so how I'm choosing to do this because it's games workshop is it is um, a space Marine and he is sitting on his bed in his barracks and he's alone and there's just maybe one faint light or whatever. His helmet is off. Originally, I wanted to have most of his armor off um, that he is basically decompressed from coming back from the battle. And he's just, in one hand, he's either holding a blown up, mostly blown up helmet that's not his own because his own is sitting beside him on the bed or a gene seed. I was going to say it should be a gene seed. That's and he's, a sick idea. Yeah. And he's, he's just, you know, his shoulders are hunched. He's sitting on his, on his cot and he's um, elbows on his knees and he's just staring at the gene seed. And so there's a small little scene. And then in the back wall of his barracks, it slowly turns into smoke and it goes up and coming up from the smoke. So above him and behind him, is a recreation of the scene that he is haunted by. Mm -hmm. And that is surrounded by a wave of, of whether it be tyranids or demons or whatever, waves and waves are kind of coming up like a tidal wave on top of him. And he's holding and trying to fight them back with his one bolter. And he's holding his companion that has had like his whole body shredded in half by this horde and so he's trying to that person isn't dead yet but he's screaming in pain there's blood everywhere it doesn't look good for him sure and so we see what he's haunted by that he couldn't save him Mm -hmm. so it's a scene that's like oh it has a face value thing i have to make sure i get my lore right and don't want the lore nerds to be mad about things and that's where i thought about gene seats um might work better but also from a human level that and a traumatic experience that we may have had or we may have experienced. We talk about PTSD. We talk about depression. We talk about um, mental anxiety that you have this thing haunting you over your shoulder. And so is that something in our miniature hobby 
that we can take in something that brings us relief, which is fantasy and science fiction and playing these games, but still something that connects with us on a deeper level. Mm -hmm. And that project is very overwhelming to think about. But But very accomplishable if if given the right amount of time. Yes. Is this at all inspired by a particular Ben Comet's diorama? No. Because what I find interesting about this... It's, it, that it has some inspirations from the waves of Tyranids from the uh, Roman Lapot. Last Light. Last Light. What I find interesting about this is that it asks the question, and books answer this mostly, but maybe people have this question, is what do space marines do in between fighting glorious battles? Mm-hmm. I I tell you what, from Google searches of Space Marine barracks and Space Marine quarters and all that kind of stuff, I find very little visuals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is descriptions in books, Mm -hmm. at least from the uh, the few of that I've read. But what I what got me thinking about Ben Comets was he has that video of uh, video that drama that drop pod Mm -hmm. that's on the ground that someone is using as living quarters. Mm -hmm. And the question is, is what happens to drop pods? A hundred years later, right? Someone's using it that's not well off to live inside of, or something like that. Right. And they got a clothesline, a dog, and they cook stuff, and, and it's it's just a it's a shelter. So it's a super interesting idea about you know it's not not necessarily whimsical, but it's it's a nonviolent portrayal of right. of something inside of Warhammer lore. Um, so yeah, that that was one thing that I liked about this particular idea you had. Yeah, it's doable. It's totally doable. doable. You should give it time. Well, now I'm on the hook for it, apparently. You don't yeah. give me oh, shit no. about it every oh, six months. So. Endlessly. Endlessly. Okay. All right. We made it through the main meat and potatoes of the episode. We did. We did. They were tasty. They were tasty. Taters. They were creamy, yet crunchy on the outside. Ooh. That and is juicy, a- yet crunchy on the outside, because chicken. Okay. Anyways. Okay. Sure. Shit's out the potatoes. <laughs> now onto the news. Oh, okay. Love Big, it. fat news. I have a story about the first item. Wait, what are we going to start with? You start with whatever you want to start with. Okay, so obviously ninth edition just got announced. Yeah, that's kind of a thing. Okay, I it, had gotten ninth what? edition Warhammer forty thousand. Yes, yes, Games Workshop product. I had gotten two emails beforehand from a, a Warhammer community member team who corresponds with me maybe like six times a year, mm-hmm. and he was like, "You're not gonna want to miss this." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, okay." And he sent it again. And he was like you're not, you're really not going to want to miss this. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, can you film your reaction? And this wasn't just to me specifically. It was to like 30 people, 20 people, 10 people, whatever it was. He was like, can you film your reaction and send it to us an hour and a half after the live event? And I was like, what the, f-? no, <laughs> no. My parents are here. Ain't no one. I can't even render a video that fast. Yeah. It's like the, the preview is like, an hour long like right. that'd be such that was so much footage to copy to my computer and to render like no because okay but anyways the implication was that whatever's being announced was groundbreaking okay and i was like oh okay i'm kind of excited yeah. like what is this gonna be it's just a new edition of 40k yeah i was just like okay like the primary space marine thing that was a big deal yeah that was a big deal that would have been maybe filming the reaction worthy but this was just like this kind of just reminded me how self-possessed GW is and how just far up their own ass they are. <laughs> this is like, you make new editions of 40K all the time. You're on the ninth one. This is not special. You're not special. Okay, that was a rant. <laughs> uh, I, if you were to tell me, because I didn't know that you had gotten that correspondence, if you would have told me that leading up to this event, what could it be? I knew it was, it was 40K related. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what else it would have been other than a new edition. I thought it'd been like, we're removing space brains from the game. I'd be like, holy shit! Like, that'd have been a big deal. Pretty sure they are, by the way. Well, pretty oh, sure they are. No, they're not. Yeah. Primary they're, space brains are space brains. Yes. Who didn't know they were getting replaced? Yeah. Like, old, derpy, regular space brains yeah, are going the way of the dinosaur. Their tiny little legs and their stupid short arms. Yeah. yeah they look dumb. <laughs> <laughs> compared to Primaris. Primaris looks so much cooler. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a new edition. There's going to be a new box. I'm assuming it's these Necrons versus uh, Blue Boys. Yep, of course, Ultramarines. Um, so that's going to be a big thing. And it looks like Necrons are getting a bunch of new models, so they're going to be a big release thing. Yeah, and also the box art for them changed. They're not just all silver anymore. Right. They got black or like interconnected joint stuff. 
Yeah, they look a little bit less like like they're from an 80s cartoon. You know? <laughs> like, yeah! Yeah, like the bad foot soldiers from like an 80s cartoon yeah. is what Necrons look like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're making them a little bit more characterful. I think definitely cooler. Like, you know, it's obviously an update on their own design and it look, looks cool. I don't still like them that much, but yeah. they're still cool. Yeah, I used to have a Necron army back in the day. Mm. I was, when I was deciding my army, that was a big lift smack I just did. Yeah. When well, I was, you've been doing it the entire <laughs> I'm so excited to be I back s- here. I scratch the bottom of the desk whenever you do it, and there's like a million scratches <laughs> down. You know, I'm just kidding. Um, when I was first deciding what army I was going to play uh, two years ago or whenever it was, Necrons was in my like my list. Yeah, you know, it's, they're kind of evil looking. Yeah, kind of evilly looking. I didn't honestly know much about Night Lords. Otherwise, I probably would have picked them. Okay. So they don't. Nightlers don't really have an army like Necrons have or like right. something else like Dark Eldar have. They're like, you probably got to buy a bunch of Forge World stuff and... Yeah, upgrade packs. And, and I, I don't, do they work in 40K? I don't, or do you have to play 30K or whatever that thing is? Well, I think you can play as Night Lords Because, yeah, there's like the Night Lord... I think there's new models or something of the hero or something, isn't there? Or Night yeah, Lord? Yes, there is. They're not for 30K specifically? No, they're for, it was for, I'm pretty sure it's 40K. Oh, okay, I, cool. I don't know. I don't know. I'm pr- I just assume that you could play Night Lords in 40K. Okay. Raptors, I think, the jump assault marines for chaos, those are based on Night Lords. Ah, uh, okay. They're all weird and bird-like. Yeah. Anyways. A big thing with this new ninth edition that they're really touting why it's so great is something that's they've done in Age of Sigmar for like, I don't know, three years, <laughs> which is they're not letting you just do soup. So you can just have access to all the toys and break the game yeah. because you just have infinite access to resources and you can find the niche of how the all the puzzle pieces fit together, right? Because you have access to all this stuff. They're getting away, with, getting done with soup. And I think that's a great thing because Age of Sigmar. And soup, for people who don't know what soup is, is just being able to make an army from the entire range of models as opposed to sticking to one thematic army. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's like well, it's Imperium or it's Chaos. You see it most. You see a lot in Chaos. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, if I'm playing right. Chaos. I can have whatever are the best models. I just play whatever are the best models in Chaos. Yeah. Instead like, of yeah. Okay, guys, that's just not cool. <laughs> um. So yeah, it's been. I I saw this in writing, two different places. I haven't ch- fact checked it, so I'm sorry if this is wrong. It has been three years since Eighth Edition came out. Okay. So seeing it multiple places um, from what look to be reputable sources, three years is a stupid short amount of time. You think it is? Yes. I think it's, I, I, what that tells me, you screwed up eighth edition. You're, you should build a system that has a longer life than this because this game is so expensive from a book perspective. From a book perspective, you've got to now buy all the crap over again. You got to buy a fifty dollars core book. You got to buy your army book. Well, actually, you kind of got to wait on your damn army book till they get released. Instead, you get these data sheets in the meantime, which your army is just shit until they actually give you a full fledged book. Which there's another forty bucks, and then they're gonna have. Well, now you just spent all this money on Psychic Awakening, which isn't even over yet. They have this whole series on Psychic Awakening isn't even finished. Yeah, even How are you gonna is. buy those products unless they are those convert to ninth edition? Well, then why the hell are you make in a new edition if all your rules in your old edition can still work in a new edition it's stupid it's like i don't understand why you need to do this in three years that feels really short it should to me it should feel like the lifespan of a console oh that's a wow that was a really succinct way to describe that how yeah how long has xbox 360 been out well it's xbox one so 360 was the one before that yeah i know how long was that one they're like five that's to what eight. I meant, that's what I meant to ask. They're like five to eight, I think, typically. I know consoles. Yeah, six, <laughs> six to eight, somewhere around there. Okay. I think five is kind of a minimum. Okay. You, know? you have a I lot like... of workroom, design space, ability to improve your game without having a new edition. Right. I feel like seventh has been out for, was out for a long time. Mm, I don't yeah. know if it was five years, but I feel like. I don't know. People, it, it almost feels like an expectation. People get antsy and then want a new thing. Sure. I, I don't know. That's what I've always felt like. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it is a major inconvenience to have to update all that stuff. Yeah. 
but hopefully it's a better game. Honestly, from the stuff that I've been hearing, it looks like it's a lot more like Age of Sigmar, which is GW just saying, all right, yeah, that's their better game system. So let's work more like that. Ooh. Rip. Ooh. Rip. Throwing that out there. Yeah. A bunch of 40K fanboys are going to crap all over you. No, I don't think that they necessarily will. If you've played both games, I mean, you can... If you play both games, it's obvious. It's you would obvious. Know. You'd know. There'd be I'm... no argument here. <laughs> why are we even arguing? Why are we talking about it? <laughs> Dude, this, this is known. This is fact. Yeah, it's just like, oh, what are the three primary colors? Like, why do we need to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> don't get started on that. Oh, boy. There are only... I heard something. There are no primary colors. You're only primary colors because those are the thir- three that somebody designated are the primary and whatever. But I'm like, no. Certain that, certain colors mix to get other colors. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you going to mix to make yellow? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. It's just yellow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. What's our next newsy news thing? Let's get uh, into that one. It's, yeah. 40K. <laughs> um, next newsy news thing. KDM sent out some... Really fancy models to people mm-hmm. before the release of the model. Now, me, me being not much of a KDM fan, cult follower, uh, I got one, um, and it's a thing. And it's a big fat bumblebee with a baby face. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's I a bumblebee with the face of a cherub or baby doll. Seriously? And he's got a a, a body that's like sliding out of one of the eyeballs. Like I thought it was described face. as a dung beetle. No, I no. mean, well, I'll look at your model after this. Dung Dung Beetle Knight is a model in the range. That's an old model. Okay, maybe so, they just sent you old stuff because yeah, you're like <laughs> fucking Scott. I don't give a shit. Maybe they did. Uh, but I was like, I was like, what can I do with this thing? And they were like, you can sell it. You can't give it to someone else. You can only paint it or not paint it. And I was like, shit. Okay. Um. So yeah, it's a special fancy model. It's coming out. And a bunch of KDM fans are swooning over it. Swooners. Yeah. And some other people got it too. Yeah. Shoshi. Shoshi. Some other Twitch streamers. Mm-hmm. Eeny Meeny's got it. I saw she is starting painting hers on Twitch. Nice. Uh, put together, it's pretty freaking creepy. Yeah. It's creepy looking. That's cool. So, there's just like little baby wings on the back too. Like little, <laughs> it's not like, I mean, it kind of is like, it's exaggerated, but it's like a real bumblebee. You know, like bumblebees, according to physics, should not be able to fly with the size of their wings according yeah. to the size of their body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's similar to that where it's, its wings are smaller than a bumblebee's wings, but not a whole lot, I don't think, according to ratio. Okay, okay, okay. Um, it's it's messed up, but it's KDM. So when is that up. thing coming out? That's not announced. It, I think it's in wave. It's in wave three. Oh God! Um, the waves. The waves. But that wave three is the next wave. But it's it's a crapshoot when that's going to happen. My guess, if I had to put dollar dues on it, is that it will be here for Black Friday this upcoming. So not for a year. while. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. That would be my guess. Okay. So, yeah, I got one of those. I'm probably going to make a video painting it because people have told me that it might do well on YouTube. I seriously doubt that there will be a large impact to the video because I'm painting one specific thing. But I've never painted a full KDM model start to finish. So, I might as well be this one. Might as well. Right. Why not? I don't have one that I've started. (laughs) And just did the breastplate. Shut up. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Last bit of news. Gen Con was... Canceled. 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 Kind of saw it coming. Yeah, it's a giant convention. Yeah. It's the biggest. Hundreds of thousands of nerds. Yeah. That don't shower. (laughs) And so events of that size get, I mean, we've seen our our state fair just got canceled. Oh my gosh. Um, We talk about millions of people over the course of nine days or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, Events like that. They're just so big. You know, in the timeline is short because Gen Con was August as well. Um, it's just you don't have a lot of runway to really know an event of that capacity with that many people coming. Like, you got to go balls to the wall, get everything organized. Yeah. You can't announce three weeks before the event that, oh. yeah, we're going to do it. It's like, whoa. Like, then you got so much stuff to set up. Yeah. Yeah. Man, State Fair. So, if you don't know, Minnesota has the second largest. Second largest of Texas. Fucking Texas. Second largest state fair in America, which means that every single day, there are hundreds of thousands of people at the state fair, mm-hmm. which whenever I go, I always take a picture down the main fairway yeah. of just a sea of bodies yeah. that just, it's its insane how many people are in one space. Um, but yeah, it's a huge thing. Companies exist solely to sell things at the state fair yep. and so the fact that it doesn't exist 
might financially ruin them. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen to Sweet Martha's Cookies. Yeah. Which is, a, you know, it's a shame. Um, but yeah. So yeah, these the, are these Gen Con probably something similar. Yeah. These small businesses that have run for generations, typically stay within their family mm-hmm. and they work nine days. I mean, uh, this is an exaggeration. They're not, they don't work just nine days a year, but they work nine days a year. Yeah. That, that is their whole income for the entire year and they make good money. Yes. But what happens if those nine days don't happen? Yeah. So I'm assuming Gen Con probably has something similar. People rely on the money they make at conventions in general, Gen Con maybe specifically, and because it's not happening, that sucks. Yeah. So, I mean, that wasn't a surprise. Gen Con wasn't a surprise. Yeah, for me it wasn't really a surprise. Um, some of the smaller ones we're kind of still holding out on, namely Nova. <laughs> Please, Nova. Please, Nova. I mean, throw them Help there. me, Nova one. Me, f- <laughs> You're my only hope. You're my only hope. From watching their Facebook stuff, they update Facebook all the time. They're really good at communicating. Um, they're they're still going strong. They're still doing a lot of work. They're still putting a lot of stuff in place, and they'll have their announcement June fifteenth, I think. Final announcement. Where June fifteenth. They, they will say, "Yay or nay?" Wow. On or before June fifteenth. So Did the they say list. that? Yeah, that's what they're going to say. Whether what we're going to do. Oh, that's, okay. Very cool. Yeah, that's good to know. So that's our newsy news. That's the newsy news. All right. Welcome to the end of the podcast. Thank you for listening to us go on about stuff like our favorite projects that we want to do at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. If you want to support the podcast, there are a number of ways that you can do that. Uh, You can buy our merch, which John is showing off right now. It's a little t-shirt. It says trapped under plastic on it. You can support us on Patreon. And on Patreon, we do an extended version of the podcast. And what we talk about is miniatures that we like from other people in the community. We talk about new things that we try, the successes and failures we had with them. And we also give feedback to one of the sprudes and spruettes in our Patreon. So you get feedback, you get access to a longer episode. Check us out on Patreon to support us. And lastly, you can support us by doing things like giving us good reviews on uh, Apple Podcasts, leaving comments and likes on the YouTube version of the thing, and telling your nerd friends about you know our podcast that it exists, that we're kind of cool, mm-hmm. moderately. I'm we're actually pulling cool. up Apple Podcasts right now we're because cool. I'm going to shame everybody if our numbers are bad. Oh no, don't do that. That definitely <laughs> doesn't work to get more. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't. Oh, <laughs> damn. No. So that's it. Uh, we release these episodes fortnightly. Fortnightly. My dogs are saying hello right now. If you can hear them barking, that's Crusher in Bullet. Because they know it is time for tendies. Tendy time. Tendy time. So, Scott, this is we were two months apart. Yes, I missed and you dearly. I I wait is waiting dearly to see you face to face to say, hey, dumbass. <laughs> you could have said that. I could, but it doesn't have the same ring to it when i'm not looking into your eyes and it's on record for record record it's it's recorded for everybody (laughs) to listen to okay um i thought this was a lot of fun to just so much more fun it was i felt like oh man i there's no way we were gonna have an ecto cooler joke if we were like virtual no 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 Uh -uh. no no no, none of me being a dumbass when it comes to references (laughs) how much how many comments are gonna shit on us uh a lot all of them a lot okay that's going to happen. That's I'm bracing for impact. Bracing. Brace for impact. My butthole's tight. <laughs> this time. <laughs> All right. That's going to end the podcast for us. We will catch you guys in two weeks from now. And what's the last thing we say? And we'll see you on the flippity flop. Booyah.